right? No, it didn't. So, so we're recording. So with that, welcome. Um, and on the next slide, um, as Paul and Leah are talking, um, there's a chat box and you're welcome to write some questions in the chat box. Um, Paul, Paul, can you advance the slide one for me? Sure. And so you can you could type some stuff in the chat box and I'll read those out to Paul. But if you don't want to type anything at the time, you can also hold your questions. And then at the end of the uh, informational webinar, we can all have a discussion to kind of clarify what this all is. So uh, with that, uh, a big welcome on the next slide is uh, welcome to all of you. Um, in the bottom, there's a, a little button called reactions. And uh, if I saw everybody's faces, I could ask, but um, anybody here from Oregon? And you can click on the reaction buttons and, and do a little thumbs up or something like that. Anybody from Oregon? Okay, David's from Oregon, thank you. And Daryl's from Oregon, great. Uh, anybody from Idaho? We got Angela, maybe from Idaho. Great. Anybody else, Idaho? Annie's from Idaho. Okay. Anybody from Alaska? Uh, any hands up for any thumbs up for Alaska? Okay. So we didn't get many of our folks from Alaska. And so then that means the rest of the folks here are our Washington people. So welcome, everybody. And um, boy, we sure are in some strange times, right? Um, I think all of us are a little bit exhausted uh, seeing uh, the terrible display of um, uh, a mob going on our Capitol building and the terrible inequities. And uh, I, I have this deep belief about clinical supervision. I've been a counselor many years and uh, as a clinical supervisor, uh, it's, it puts me in a position to be able to help the other people in clinics to improve their skills. And as they improve the skills, uh, it, it means that the people that come into your clinic get better care. And so it's really kind of a model of healers helping healers uh, in our communities do a better job of serving the people that we have out there. So I'm really excited about what clinical supervision can offer us. And it's a great way to make sure that those folks out there in need continue to get what they need. So with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Paul and Leah. Paul, on the next slide, I think you got the credentials. Um, Paul uh, is has a company called um, Family Therapy and Recovery, and he's also getting ready to open a training company. Paul has been doing clinical supervision for quite a long time. He's well-versed in this subject. And I'd like to introduce Leah Nicolucci, and Leah works as a director of the Chehalis Tribal Behavioral Health. And Leah has joined us as a co-facilitator for this training series. And we're particularly doing that to make sure that um, the, this, this training that goes out into the community starting in March does the best we possibly can to meet the needs of our tribal partners. And uh, Leah and Paul, I'm going to turn it over to you. And if there's anything else you want to say about yourselves, feel free to do that. My name is David Jefferson. I work for the Northwest ATTC and my title is Director of Training and Technical Assistance. But I, I have a regional perspective of what our ATTC does, which is Idaho, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska. And so I'm, I'm really excited today to be here and um, get to participate in this informational webinar with you. So with that, Leon Paul. Thanks, David. Thank you so much for that introduction. Yes, acknowledging kind of the context of where we're at today is definitely an important piece with everything going on this week. Um, so uh, I guess, Leah, would you like to introduce yourself a little more? I don't know if you wanted to add on to what David had said. 
Um, I don't have too much to add, um, except I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm glad that uh, this training is happening. And um, not only am I the director of uh, Shahalis Tribal Behavior Health, I'm also a mother. I'm also a grandmother, if you can believe it. And <laughs> I'm also um, a sister um, and an aunt as well. So, so many, so many things um, that we do in our day-to-day -day life. And so um, it's refreshing to be able to participate um, in this training and offer my uh, perspective. So thank you. Yes, great. Thank you, Leah. And definitely I'm grateful to have your perspective added into this. I know I've, I've done these trainings, but to collaborate with uh, the collaboration that we've had has been wonderful. I'm really looking forward to being able to add all of that together and really bring this training um, forward in a significant way. Thank you. So yeah, I'm also grateful to be here. I'm um, pretty much, uh, David introduced me well. Uh, I've taught with ATTC since 2015. Um, I've taught supervision um, that entire time. I've been a supervisor, it's about 12 years now. So um, kind of working with that as well. So a lot of work with this going in. Uh, let me move the slides forward here. So with supervision, um, taught it for a long time, always like to update it. Always, we've kind of developed our idea of who would be best to attend. And so what we've found is that it's really folks that are currently doing supervision or about to do supervision, like that supervision really is in the cards kind of coming in, tend to get the most out of this experience. And especially with this prolonged immersion experience that we've now had going for about a, most of a year now. So really looking at, ideally it would be folks providing supervision or at least about to uh, for SUD counselors, peer support folks, parent partners, behavioral health aides, mental health counselors, MFTs, social workers, um, maybe in case managers, other folks in here that you might um, think of. Uh, that's really ideally for it. I will note like there are sometimes been folks that have kind of come in to see whether they like supervision. Um, it's not necessarily the best fit sometimes for those folks because we do so much practical work and we're so hands-on with the supervision. It's a little bit tricky for them to kind of figure out how to apply it if they're not currently doing it or really getting ready to do it. That's why we add this piece in. So here we've got uh, ATTC. So <clears throat> um, the four state piece going in. So we've got Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. And this is really with the collaboration between Leah and I, we've really tried to add in and bring this so that it has a tribal focus. And so it can really be more applicable because we've offered this training years ago and we've sometimes had the critique that it isn't necessarily as applicable um, in that environment. This is really us responding to that and trying to figure out how, making sure that it is applicable in that, in that area. So the immersion program is a bit different. You might be familiar if you've been in the field for some time with our original model, we would have part one, part two, or clinical supervision, clinical supervision two, there were two 15 hour courses. We really have shifted that now. It's a six month long program. And the, the purpose behind this is really to have it be a full immersion so that the supervisors that get involved in this training really learn the skills and know how to apply them as we go forward. And the folks that have gone through this really feel the difference. Um, they really have been appreciative of constantly coming back to it. It's really helped them integrate the skills into their practice. So yeah, kind of looking at that. Now we limit this to 30 people, partly because we want to make sure that we give personalized attention for each individual as well. Can I make a comment, Paul? Sure, please, please. You know, and, and Paul and Leah, we've, we've, we've done this adaptation to six months partly because when people did the one and two training, uh, they got all the skills, but not enough practice time. So now, not only do you get the skills, but you get a, a good length of time where you could practice and still get some coaching to make sure that the practice is sticking, which is means that 
it's more likely that these skills are going to stay with you instead of fading away when the training is gone. So that's the idea. We, we want to do what we can to help these skills stick so that they are put to good use. Thank you, David. Yeah, definitely. I also want to highlight that bottom piece on this slide of talking about meeting the requirements for all state guidelines. So we've researched Idaho, Oregon, Alaska, and of course, Washington, um, and made sure that we meet those requirements, whether that's for mental health counselors, which is in most states, it's 15 hours of training. Um, but for substance use disorder counselors in some of the states, it's up to 30 hours. And so we do meet that requirement here. Did you want to add something, David? No. Oh, sorry, I did. All right. All right. So six months, a lot of kind of parts working into this. Because um, So the way that this splays, splays out, we have our first portion, which is initiate. We kick it off with a two full day Zoom training. So now just... So you know, and we discuss this later in another slide that it's very interactive. Um, I've been working on Zoom trainings. I was working on Zoom trainings about two years before the pandemic hit. And so I've really worked uh, to, to make sure that they're interactive. And then once the pandemic hit, I was working a lot with other trainers to help them get transform their stuff onto Zoom. So highly interactive trainings um, for the first two days there. Then we follow that two day training with four one hour meetings that happen every other week. And these are also Zoom based. And so these tend to be, sometimes they're smaller groups, but we really are able to talk about and extend the material, um, have people come in with questions about applying it. Uh, we really revisit it a number of times and that's where the, it further reinforces the skill set. Once that's finished, that will be sometime in, is it, I think, May, I believe. Yeah, um, April 4th, it'll finish. Okay, yeah. thanks. All right, so then in mid-April, um, we'll have an, a one-day booster training so that we re all come back together for a full day, and then we go into an eight, eight one-hour follow-ups. So it's a much longer period. And this is where we really, now we have all the skills and so we're able to work with it and we really kind of, it's where the rubber meets the road. We really talk about how to apply them. And then we further reinforce that with one individual supervision coaching session where supervision of supervision is modeled. And then we also do some coaching and troubleshooting if people are having difficulty with supervisees, but really working with them to kind of show the skills and, and further enhance them. And I think dates is the next slide, David, is it not? Yeah, and I, I also have my slide with the, the dates up too. I think you're gonna show it in a one was, format. Did you wanna, oh, I thought you were gonna pull up yours. Yeah, let me, let me show folks. And just so I think this will be helpful for folks to see, this is what the dates look like. And Paul, can you see that okay? Yep, totally. Okay. So then you can talk it through if you want to a little bit sure. more. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> So yeah, the dates going that first two day piece. So the two full days would be March 11th and 12th, uh, and then and that of course would be on Zoom, and then the follow ups uh, would be it's every other Tuesday. So it's the 23rd, the 6th, the 20th, and then the 4th. The mm -hmm. May 4th would be the final of mm -hmm. of those that first portion. Now you see group one and group two because we'll ideally split this out into two groups so they have smaller sizes so they're able to have more interaction and be more um, but even more interactive than we would in the large meeting. Then once we go into uh, in on the 21st of May we have the one day booster that's the part two beginning of uh, clinical supervision two and then you can see it, it, we fall right back into the this time it's eight follow-up sessions. And we do that all the way through September. So it is quite a quite an extensive program. And so when people sign up, recognizing it's it's a bit of, it's a commitment. Now we do have in here they can miss one meeting in each of the parts and still be okay. That is actually part of the the setup. Um, we understand life happens, 
And also just so you know, in the current group that I'm working with, I've got some folks that have missed some meetings and I'm working with them to figure out ways to make up. And we have several different ways to do that, but I am figuring out how to be as flexible as I possibly can to make sure that they meet their, their requirements that they need. Great, thanks, David. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna come back to my screen. Sorry, I'm gonna skip a slide here because David's slide was a lot better looking. Okay, there we go. Now I'm on the right one. All right. So looking at objectives and we have the objectives split out into part one and part two. So uh, of course, understanding research behind supervision, which there isn't much, but we will look at what is there. Looking at the roles of supervision, we do have a cultural component in here and we definitely will add more going in. Um, and that we touch on this in the first part and we expand even further in the second. We look at feedback, we gain familiarity with resources of supervision. Now, Leah, I don't, I kind of, we've added some materials in here. I don't know if we want to add something specific objectives wise around the tribal information. Um, I hand. think to increase awareness of culture and supervision, I can think of a, another additional objective. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would definitely be to um, increase awareness of um, community um, and um, I, I almost the importance of you know counselor retention. Maybe that's not the right words, but somewhere along those lines. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Leah. All right. Yeah, and I've, I've had a good chance to talk with Leah and Paul a little bit. And, you know, Leah wants to emphasize the importance. I mean, it's not said here in the objective, but um, helping people fit into uh, how services are done in tribal communities. And not everybody uh, comes in with the knowledge about how to do that and learning how to be a good counselor in a tribal community means learning how to, what, what's going on in, the, in that community and what's going on with the families, with the aunties, with the, with the culture. And if you don't understand that and know how to interact with that well, um, you're gonna be a fish out of water for a while. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've heard Leah say, you gotta learn the land and the people if you're going to be a good counselor and if you don't know that it's going to be pretty hard for you to be a good counselor did i say that about right leah yeah perfect David. <laughs> yeah i don't know how to put that in an objective it's it's because it's just too big of a item yeah yeah okay. i think we can come up with something okay we'll work on that yeah back to you paul great thank you all right, and so then moving into part two. And so in part two, we expand on the cultural piece. We look at the addressing framework from Pamela Hayes quite extensively. And we look at kind of um, ways to adapt that or ways to work with that um, in looking at cultural complexity and intersectionality and a lot of other factors going in. I also add a piece in there around how to have cultural conversa or con conversations um, of a cultural nature. And um, so there's there's quite a bit added in there. Some, when we have time, we look at, um, well, we sometimes are, we're seeming to do this in the follow-up meetings is looking at an MA, MI model of case consultation. We do talk about group consultation because group consultation is great for your supervisees that are extroverted. It's probably a nightmare for your supervisees that are introverted. And we'll talk about ways of managing that and shifting that um, and how to work around kind of with different personalities and different learning types, which then goes into practicing corrective interviewing and kind of looking at that and the difference where when you need to be firm and really set, um, have a more directive type conversation. Um, and then lastly, we do look at ethical dilemmas and boundary issues going in. So it looks like there's been a couple of things in chat. I'm not able to see them. David, is there, are there questions? They're good? All right. Nope, you're good. Keep uh, going. 
All right, so then looking at tools a little bit further. So we, of course, we're looking at methods of giving feedback, but also ways of being direct when needed. Um, how to be as objective as possible in giving feedback, because it's, it's not technically possible to be fully objective, but we do look at how to, how to improve that. Um, we look at professional development and we really add, a, there's a lot of work in there of um, looking at in tribal environments, how to, because it's an added piece of professional development, making sure that you understand the people and understand um, the culture and how to work with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some suggestions for um, um, supervisors to help their supervisees develop that piece. And um, I think on a wider scale, but also more importantly, specific to the community and um, that you're working in. Yep. Great. Thank you. And then, of course, when part two, we really look at when we need to be more directive and how to how to do that effectively. And then of course, throughout, we're looking at cultural diversity and awareness and humility um, and working at looking at how to have conversations around that and how to deepen those conversations. Paul, would it be safe to say that, that the people that are participating, uh, it, they end up in, in, a, in a learning community. So it's people learning from each other as much as the material that you're going to get. So it's learning from each other and using the material that is being presented. And so you have Leah and, and Paul there to kind of coach people along, but there's adaptations all along the way to make sure that it fits with the work you're doing. Oh, yes. It's, I mean, thank you, David. So it's, it's very flexible. We're kind of laying stuff out here and we generally cover these, but with every course we adapt and shift based on the needs of what's of, of, of the people in the group. Right. Um, and yeah, that's ongoing. And to also that part of that learning community, it's an incredibly tight learning community that's made. Supervision is a, is a isolating job. We probably all feel that. Unfortunately, part of it kind of has to be um, because it's not great for us to be friends with our supervisees. I know there's some ins and outs with that, but um, we this learning community that's created really cuts through that isolation and makes you feel like you have a network of supervisors around you that understand the work, understand what you're going through, and are able to give you resources and support in that in that whole process. Yeah, cool. So we do. Uh, with the virtual learning, I mentioned earlier, kind of making sure the trainings are as interactive as possible. We use a bunch of different didactic uh, options such as video, lecture, discussion. We're changing up constantly. Lots of practice, lots of skills work. Um, we do some live experiential training sessions. So they're doing work. They'll also see demonstrations, um, small group, and a lot of work in breakout rooms and small groups. Frequently, that's the feedback I get at the end of the session. I'm so grateful I had these small groups because it was helpful to get the information from that smaller group. And then lastly, direct observation combined with individual coaching. So that's in the last sessions, the follow-up session, or I'm sorry, not even the follow-up sessions, the individual coaching sessions, they'll get some direct observation. All right. I don't know if that, so here, uh, David, I don't know if you want to take over about talking about sure. registration. So we're, we're working on the flyer and we're going to get that out in late January. I'd love to give you a date, but I, I don't have the date yet, but the plan was around the 25th of January. Uh, we've, we've had the good fortune of working with a variety of people that have uh, messaged to you. And as a result, that's how you got this first uh, invitation. Um, so we're gonna go through those folks again. We'll, we'll send out the flyer and then people can register for the training. And then we'll, we'll monitor all the registration as it comes along. The unfortunate piece is uh, it's only 30 people. Uh, and so uh, with a four state offering is a pretty good chance that those spots are gonna get taken up pretty darn quick. Um, uh, I can also send that invitation to directly to you because you registered for this uh, informational webinar. And as a courtesy, I can send that directly to you. So you might get it 
one or two minutes before you would get it otherwise through other means. Um, I also, my name and contact information is there. I'll also drop that in the chat box and you could also contact me anytime you'd like if you have more questions about that. So I think that's about it. And the registration will have all information uh, there for you to figure out how do you sign up? And then once you sign up, you'll get emails from Paul to say, save these dates in your calendar. And so you can then save all those dates in the calendars. The ATTC will send the major dates for the two-day training and the one-day training, but all the smaller trainings, Paul and Leah will manage those. Good? Okay. So maybe we... Um, stop the screen sharing and, and see what we have in chat. Uh, it says, people would like a copy of the slides. We'll make sure that uh, those go to people, Angela and um, Hamilton and Gary. So yeah, well, I'll send everybody here today that registered, I'll send you the slides, but I'm also gonna rec you know, put the recording on the website so people can click on that and listen to it too. So questions, comments, anybody? Feel free to unmute yourself and just ask away. Do, do those who showed up have priority? Uh, you might get priority just because you might get the registration flyer quicker than one other person. You know, that, that's the only thing. We'll send it out. You know how you do when you send out something? You try, you know, that gets sent to somebody and then they send it to somebody else. So those things go quicker or slower, depending on who got it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> things aren't always as fast as you want them to be. And I, I want to be as fair as possible, you know, making sure that everybody has an equitable chance to sign up for this. So, but you're likely to get yours five minutes before they do. Are you bummed about that? <laughs> David goes, no, I'm not really. Leah? I was going to say, are there any questions at all for me or Paul? Anything? Hi, this this is Gary Gaggins. Uh, I'm, I'm from Sammy. If I may, uh, I did the clinical supervisor training a number of years ago at down in uh, Seattle. And for me, I did that two, you know, two sessions thing. And, and I too, like someone commented earlier, I walked away uh, with uh, some of the tools, but I didn't have a clue. And I really like uh, how this is designed that you can hone your skills as you go. So no, I really appreciate this. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks, Gary. And, and we didn't pay Gary to say that. <laughs> But, but that's, a, that's the perfect example is, you know, forget what the stuff is and we're, we're, we want to change that so that stuff sticks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And a lot of my perspective um, in the training is um, really bringing the attention of um, um, educating counselors that you're supervising on the community and the tribe or village um, that you're that you're working in, um, it's very surprising. Um, doesn't surprise me anymore. But a lot of providers um, apply for a tribe, work at a tribe, and do not know any history about the tribe or um, um, indigenous issues, for that matter. So um, I'm kind of bringing in um, that perspective. Um, as we, we work with supervisees um, through, you know, through their time. And that also helps with retention as well. So um, I'm really excited about uh, participating in this training and um, I hope to see everyone there. We, we got a question from Daryl. It says, can other staff sign up for the training even if they didn't participate? Yeah. The, today is just information. So this is not a prerequisite to the training at all. This is just, we, we presented this to some folks and they said, hey, 
That sounds awfully complicated. Can you please do an informational webinar so we understand it better? We said, sure, we'll do that because it is kind of complicated. You saw all those dates, but no, no, no prerequisite at all. Everybody will get the flyer and then whoever gets the flyer gets to sign up. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it's, two, it's two days of training. Um, Pre-COVID, we, I mean, I can't tell you how many events and trainings that I went to. Um, and then the afterwards is an investment of those hour sessions, an investment in our, in our skills and ability to, to work with um, those we supervise, so. Yeah. Other questions, comments, anybody? You know, one thing that that's that one of the footprints that we're hoping out of all this is you will all, whoever participates in this is going to get a chance to meet people from four different states. So you might kind of get to learn somebody that you kind of like maybe hit it off with and you can in, in increase your supervisory network as time goes on and, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes just finding one other person that you click with, that you can stay in touch with. Uh, Paul said in clinical supervisor world is sometimes kind of isolating and lonely. Uh, and boy, to have another person that, out there that uh, you may be able to bounce some ideas off over time, uh, I think could be really valuable. So that's why we're really excited about getting the, uh, folks together from four states because that, that interaction is gonna be so rich it's such an opportunity. Yeah, that definitely I would add. And it's been in working with the groups currently there. Uh, it's been incredibly rich. Uh, we've all been involved in everyone's life. We kind of know and we check in on and it's a, it's a community, but we also have been able to provide resources back and forth. And there's a real strong movement to try to figure out how to maintain contact going on beyond once we're done in, in February. So. And this is the first time that we're doing it specifically for um, tribes in the region. So. Any other questions? I don't want to take anybody's time. If we're kind of done, we're done, but uh, we're here for you. If there's anything you want to know more about. Okay, going once, twice, three times. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So I'll, I'll bundle up the slides. Uh, I'll send them to the folks who participated today. Thank you for the permission to record. I'll put that up on our website so that people will have this to view for more information. And looking forward to seeing you at the training if you decide that this is what you want to do. So with that, um, thank you and um, best wishes. Anything thank else, you. Leah? No. See y'all there. Okay. All right. Bye, folks.